Hey guys, you're watching Quixotol. Here's how to create a placeholder loading effect with React.js. Okay, so we literally just created a new uh, React app using npx create React app and I've deleted the a lot of the default files that we don't need like testing files etc. And I've just added some styling into the global uh, index.css style sheet and this just increases um, uniformity among different browsers. So it sets some default styling essentially uh, that, omit, that negates variation between different browsers and then we just got this hello world placeholder. We'll launch up a terminal, we'll run the, uh, the script that it automatically creates for us when we use the npx tool called uh, start. Obviously you can find that here in the package.json uh, what, that, what that script actually does. And yeah, we'll just use that. We should be able to see hello world placeholder. Again, it's not complicated, just there it is. Uh, the first thing that I'll do is I'll create a new folder called pages. Inside, I will create a new page. And if you've ever used React Router, then this should be familiar with you. So let me just use a uh, code snippet to speed things up a bit. Again, because there's no point really typing out boilerplate code manually, because that's just a waste of time, basically. Uh, and then we'll import, so I'll import that here. Card page like so, replace this. So add it there, so I don't know what, no, not, not card page, yeah, there you go. Not with applause, that's what I meant. Inside, yes, yeah, so the reason why we have uh, a sort of page here, because obviously we're not using React out of this tutorial because it's not a fully fledged out application. So there aren't going to be different routes or anything like that, but just we're simulating what we would do uh, in a real application. And this is what we would do. We would have our top level components, which are there to simulate pages um, in a folder somewhere. Again, it's up to your choosing how you decide to lay out your application. But then we would include it uh, in the main component, in the main app component that gets mounted to the DOM. And inside this, we'll just create, with a very simple style property, we'll literally just create uh, our background essentially. So min height of 100 viewing height, so this will take up the entire body. Uh, and it will fill our entire viewport with that um, gray color background. So I'm, I need to concentrate, display, we'll say flex. Because we want to use this to center the card both horizontally and vertically so justify content will handle the horizontal align items will handle the vertical and then we'll say padding one relative unit on or different uh, sides next we will create the actual card component so inside here we'll create a new folder component simple enough inside we will create a folder called card and inside here we'll have two files. One file will be the actual card component itself and this will be obviously React functional component because that's the most up-to-date method as opposed to the old-fashioned class-based components although there's nothing wrong with that technically. The other file will be a CSS module file which will scope all the styling inside this file into this uh, functional component which we'll is created here using a code snippet if you're wondering how I create these code snippets, it's a VS Code extension. If you just type in a React Code Snippet, it should be the first one that um, appears. Uh, but anyway, what we'll do, we will this will return uh, styles dot card. So yeah, this isn't working at the moment. You know why? Because we need to import styles from the CSS module, and this will contain all of the, um, hold on a sec, yeah this will, this object will contain all of the styles, obviously we don't have any at the moment but it will contain all the styles defined here uh, and it will essentially make, it will modify the class name to make it unique to this component essentially so that styling here won't affect uh, anything outside, styling in this file here won't affect anything outside of this component or, so that's good essentially 
oh sorry, any any file that imports this uh, styles object from this exact file. So anything that doesn't import this, it won't be affected by uh, these classes, essentially. So as for that card class, because remember styles.card, so we need to, so this will correspond to this card class here. We'll say border radius, we will uh, border radius 10 pixels, and that will just round off the edges a bit. Box shadow, zero offset horizontal, two pixels uh, vertical, 10 pixels blur. And then as for the actual color of it, we black color with 0.2 alpha, so it will be very uh, lucid, not very opaque, essentially. Max width, we'll say 350 pixels, so it can't exceed 350 pixels. However, on viewing widths smaller than 350 pixels, take up the entire uh, width of its container, which will, it won't be the entire viewport because we added some padding, remember, onto uh, this, which is eventually where we, uh, we'll do it now actually. So we'll go up and then we'll go and then card, card.js. We don't have to do it when we import here because it automatically resolves to .js. And yes, yeah, so if we test this out, actually no, we won't be able to say anything at the moment, so best not. And we'll set overflow hidden, so we won't be able to transcend the set width, basically. Although we don't have, yes, yeah, so any child won't be able to go over the set width, but we don't have a set height, so that won't really affect anything. As for, we'll also create a new div inside. We'll call it card. Header, again I'll we'll create the corresponding class. It's best to set overflow to hidden because overflow to hidden is very important for the uh, placeholder loading effect uh, that we'll be creating later on. Again it won't make much, it won't, uh, the purpose of it won't be that important for now but trust me it will come invaluable uh, later on. So after that what we'll do is we'll create the image element um, and then as for where the source the image comes from it will come from a property for this component so that we can customize the content of the card component just based on the properties that we give it <coughs> need to include some alt text to remove the terror and it will also have a, its own class name of styles card header image and we'll need to configure this like so so object fit cover to make it fill out uh, fill out uh, its dimensions uh, and do it proportionally to the image that is actually uh, in the source property as for where we'll get the image from, again I'll just copy it here. Again, I'm not going to stress over this too much because obviously it's unimportant for now. But we'll just paste that here. Again, main image. So then if we go to our application, we try and test it out. We should be able to see something like this. Obviously the image is up to your discretion. Um, and it's also important that we set overflow to hidden as well. Here because otherwise you wouldn't get, um, I'll just show you. If we removed overflow hidden, which we shouldn't then again we won't get the rounded edges so we add that and then yeah as you can see we're getting the rounded edges so that's all good because it's saying clip everything that doesn't uh, clip everything clip every child element that goes over the set dimensions essentially so that's allows us to clip stuff which goes over these rounded edges which we set via the border radius Okay, and then adjacent to the card header, we will contain, we will create another div, and this will contain all the other content of the uh, of the card component that is not uh, the top image, essentially. So we'll call it card sub background color to be white, just to contrast with the black text. Panning will be. 30 pixels all around 
Okay, and then what we'll have inside this, we'll have a H3. And again, its tech, its content will come from a property called title. Yes, yeah, so again, we can dynamically customize the content of a card component based on what properties we give it when we instantiate it uh, in another component. So we'll say, as for this content, we'll call it sub title, and we'll also give it a class name as well. Styles, info, text. And then what we'll need to do, we will create some padding, uh, some spacing basically, vertical spacing between the HP and the paragraph, like so. And then we'll also change the color of the info text, like so. And so, and then because we have eight uh, pixels top and bottom uh, margin on both the HP and the paragraph, we'll need to change this to 22 pixels, 30 pixels, so that there is essentially 30 pixels padding on, on all sides. And because 22 pixels plus eight is 30 pixels, then that's the reason why we do this here, because if we just made 30 pixels that it would go over, it would be 38 pixels top and bottom, because these two values would be added together. We don't want that, so 22 pixels. Refresh to avoid any errors. Oh yeah, obviously we're not gonna see the text because we haven't actually uh, assigned any values to those properties. So we'll just do that here. Again, this is just a uh, law of Ipsum, doesn't really matter. And then obviously, okay, so we have some text here, so that's all good. Okay, we'll now, um, we'll now create the profile bit at the bottom where it shows the person's photo along with the name and the date that the card was made or whatever, just a date. I don't really know what it's for, but we just have a date there. And then, so the profile, this will be a container actually. We'll say margin top 16 pixels. We'll make it display flex. And we'll say align items. So considering that the flex direction is row by default, we'll say align items center, and this will be uh, align. This will align the items vertically <coughs> in the center. And then what we we'll need to do inside here, we'll say class name styles dot profile. Photo container, like so. Again, we'll style this. Width and height will both be a set 60 pixels. Overflow, again, very important. Hidden, because we will be including a border radius. And we want this to affect the child element. So that's why we set overflow to hidden. And then margin right, you want to space it out between the element that will be replaced to the right of it, thanks to the, um, the flex direction. Sorry, thanks to uh, yeah, the uh, flex container, which is this profile. Again, another image. Source, obviously, as I've explained now, uh, will, be, will come from a property. Again, we'll give it a class name. Profile photo. This will be 100%. Well, it'll match the width and height of its container completely. And then object fit to cover. Then again, obviously we need to assign a value to this property. So I've just copied that and then again I'll paste it here. So that now, if we just ignore that. So yeah, again, this should we should have this. Even though it's a square image, it, it looks like a circle thanks to the border radius of 50%, which is how you create. It's how you create circles, in case you didn't know, in HTML. So next to this, we'll just create another div element. Doesn't need to be anything else. It just needs to be uh, another direct child of this uh, profile which is display flex, so this will appear 
to the right of the element that's already in the row essentially and then what we'll do we'll create two paragraphs both for their content again remember obviously it will come from a property and they both have class names as well Like so, so pretty simple. Again, this is, I'm pretty sure these are the last two. These are the last two uh, classes that we need to create, actually. So it's not too hard. At, I hope. Actually, we'll just copy this color. We could use the same class to be fair, but best to keep things unique. And then finally, we'll just add the last two properties here real quick. I don't know who that is. Oh no, it's just a random name that I decided to use. So if you go back, again refresh so we don't get any errors. As you can see, this is the finished product. I don't know why that's... Oh yeah, it's because... Um... So yeah, it's because of this. Whoops, class, name. That needs to be in camel case, and yep, make, create, make sure that's right. As you can see, this is now what we have. So that should be good, I hope. Okay, we'll now start with the actual, um, the part that you actually watch this tutorial for. Sorry it took so long to get to, but it is what it is. And that is, we'll create the placeholder loading effect. I will do that in its own separate folder. Even now, this uh, component won't actually have any CSS modules. All of its styling will come from just using default React styling. Um, and you'll see why. Well, right now, actually, I don't know why I did that. Sorry, I probably shouldn't have done that. But what we will do is we will return two divs, and they'll both have both of their style objects will well yeah they'll both have style properties and containing objects which we need to create again all of this will make sense very very shortly so what we'll do we'll say const we'll create the first one obviously And it will be hex value of a kind of a grey colour. Its so width will be 100%. So always take out 100% of the width of whatever its container is or the document width if there is no container. Overflow, very important. Hidden, because obviously this is a container element, it wraps the this div here. And then what we'll do, we'll do some, we'll use the sped operator. Whoops, oh my, I don't know what is going on there. Yeah, we'll use the sped operator and then we'll say props dot extra styles. And obviously, you know, extra styles isn't an uh, initialized property, but this just allows us to include, assign an object to this extra styles property and it will automatically add to the styles contained here so that we can add some extra styles of our own choosing to this load of styles object, which then gets applied to that div there. And as for the second one, This one will be position absolute, and so this works actually. We need to set this to be position relative, so that this is position up in relation to this here. Uh, and then we'll need to set it to, so they have the same origins, and the origins will match the top left corner. So both of the top left corners will be on the same point basically. And then it takes up 100% of the width. And then we'll, the background will be a linear gradient. And this will create the loading effect essentially. 
and the direction it will go from right to left and then we start at the it's grey colour at 10% in the middle, in the exact middle we go to a darker grey colour as I said in the exact middle, so 50% and then we'll finish off for 90% the full width of the element we will end up at this um, grey colour and it will just remain that to the, for the remaining 10% and then we'll set height to be 100% as well of its, um, of its container and so now with this created we will need to go to, again we're not finished with this file but we're just because we haven't actually got any animation yet but I, I, I'm just going to show you what it actually looks like so we'll need to import it like so yes yeah, so I don't know what's going on here but we might as well change this because I've got this load a load placeholder but then the other one loading and that should hopefully change here if my VS code is working correctly and it does so we don't get any errors what we'll do we'll just say loader place holder uh, like so and what we'll need to do is at the moment let's just see what it looks like again we won't be able to see anything the reason being is because if you noticed here there's no height here so we, that's what we use well that's one of the reasons that we we'll use extra styles property for use double curly bases to include an object uh, to assign uh, an object to this property and we'll simply say height 100% like so and so now if we refresh and as you can see we're getting this uh, again it's not animated so you know but we are getting uh, a grayed out effect here and yeah overflow hidden was so important because if, if, if there was no overflow hidden here then that image would just be pushed down let me just comment this out Again, this would be pushed down, but and it is pushed down, but we just can't see it because over overflow hidden. So yeah, this is all good. Uh, let me just go back. What we now need to do, we'll go to the index.css because animations using this method, which is kind of a primitive method, but it suits our purpose. They need to be created in the global star sheet when we use React. We can't really scope animations to a component, I mean we can use in GSAP and stuff and frame of motion and uh, other React stuff like uh, styled components but using this very primitive method we can't really do that so we'll just have to declare it in the uh, in the global style sheet and all this does is basically it just goes from all the way out of its container on the left to all the way to the right of its container that's all it does essentially and obviously this can be applied to this absolute position element because we already had this left property so that it works alright so we will apply it here and then we'll say load uh, swipe anim one seconds and then we will give it a very interesting ease essentially again there are many tools uh, to help you create these eases on the internet and then we'll say infinite so that it continues to loop and that's spelled wrong so as you can see we now have this cool effect um, and yeah that's uh, essentially what's going on here as you can see it's looking a lot nicer now uh, what we now need to do is actually make sure we need a way for this to actually uh, disappear eventually. So what we'll do, we'll go to our card component and we'll import use state from React and then we'll say const loaded and then we obviously we need to uh, also use object destructuring to destruct the set loaded method and then what we'll do, we'll create an event handler like 
like so. And then what we'll do, we will simply say set loaded equals to true when the event handler is activated and because we don't really have, we're not getting anything from an API or anything at the moment, our asynchronous task will come from these images and that will determine when everything's loaded or not. So as a stuff loaded and then, so when this image is loaded, the event handler activated, this is set to true. And then when it's set to true, that loaded property will be set to true, meaning that this should only be rendered out. When loaded, it's set to false as specified with the bang operator. That's what the exclamation mark is called. So we be very fresh now. We don't even see it because it doesn't take long to load this image. So what we'll do, just so that, obviously there's no reason why you would do this in a real application. Because <coughs> you don't want, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry, just, <coughs> just excuse me, sorry. Um, yeah, obviously you don't want to wait longer than you have to, but anyway, we're just doing it here, so waiting two seconds longer than what we have to. And yeah, I mean, this is the loading effect. Basically, let's just apply it to the elements now. But again, it's not too hard to see how this will work now for the rest of this uh, tutorial. As for the card stuff, we'll say, again, similar sort of property, we'll just copy, similar sort of a methodology, sorry. We'll just copy this here. We will change some of this. Instead of height of 100%, we'll set this to be a fixed height of 15 pixels. And uh, we'll also add some extra margin. Whoops, I don't know what, oh, okay. We'll also add some extra margin bottom of 16 pixels. And then we'll make it have rounded borders like so just so that it's akin to a line and then we look at this now again this looks weird because this text needs to disappear obviously we couldn't de-render uh, the image because it needs to be loaded immediately uh, which is the reason why it's in a container and it's the reason why uh, this is placed on top of it inside the container but as for the text what we'll do we could just say don't render out the text essentially until this is set to true. So until these two conditions are met, then actually uh, render out this. So as you can see, now now we're getting that simulated uh, text. Uh, now let's do it for the other one. The problem with the other one is this could be however lines long. Uh, so what we'll do is this paragraph side. Obviously we use the same principle of only rendering it out when the state is right but other than that what we'll do we'll use this method to hold on let me just try and explain something so basically what this will do is it will generate an array of 10 items long starting at 0 going up to 10 uh, adding 1 sequentially that's basically what this will do so what we want to do is we'll say math dot seal to round up. Think of a ceiling, I don't know why it's called that really. So ceiling means you know round up, whatever. And then we'll say props dot subtitle dot length divided by thirty nine. Now calculated with the uh, font with the uh, space available to us and the font size that we're using, etc., there is approximately 39 characters, including white space, um, in a line. So what we're saying is how many lines essentially do we have and we round it up so that if a line's incomplete, then it will still have uh, a placeholder line to represent that incomplete line, essentially. And then what we'll do is we will map this array because it is an array uh, once the calculation is finished. And then callback function. The callback function doesn't need anything. We use parentheses to return an element on multiple lines. And then we'll say we will return 
only if loaded is false, we will return the loading. Sorry, loader. I keep on saying, I don't know why. Loader placeholder. Uh, again, extra styles. Well, you know, we'll just copy this, but we don't need the barge and bottom anymore because that's just to create some padding, basically, so have some space. So we'll just remove that. Between some space between the header and the paragraph, but we don't need any space here, really. As you can see, this is what we've got now. Again, this is looking very good, if I may say so. I mean, in my opinion, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but obviously. And again, but I mean, I'm not the first person to come up with this in the first place, anyway, but. You know, I, I guess I, well, I'm the first person to do this with React, at least on YouTube, uh, as far as I can tell. But again, we've got another image, so what we want to do is, this doesn't need to be states because it's not going to cause any re-renders on its own anyway. It will indirectly, but it's not on its own. So what I'll say, image load num, what, plus plus, and we've got two images that we want to load in this component, so... If it's less than two, then we return and don't call the set timeout method. However, obviously, if it is two, it will only really be two. It will never exceed two because we will add it to onload here. So when both of these are met, it will equal two, and then the set timeout will be reached. Um, and then what do we want to do? We want to say that essentially this image oh yeah okay again we use the same sort of principle that we used for this image here again we don't want to de-render the image because we want it to be loaded uh, and then we'll set extra styles width 100 percent yeah so this is this should be good as far as i'm concerned yeah so that is there again thanks to this and overflow hidden it's uh it's all working correctly as for these two things, what we'll do, again, we'll just be, try and make this as quick as possible. Uh, again, we'll only render them. Whoops, if loaded is true. Again, I'll, I'll hold down Alt and then click to do that, to do this in VS Code. And you know, we'll just copy this. For now. As for these, uh, we'll say, do we we we'll say border radius 10%? Yeah, actually, this is good. We'll just remove this. Keep the height 15 pixels. Actually, you know, we'll set width to be 100 pixels. So this actually overwrite this here, width 100%. This will overwrite it. Um, so that it doesn't have a fixed width 100%. And we'll do the same here, except this will be slightly longer represent this, the text which is slightly longer anyway and so now if we refresh as you can see well this is what we have uh oh actually wait yeah so this needs to have some margin so so we'll add that four pixels top and bottom and then nothing on left and right so as you can see this is what we have uh, and yeah, this is representing, essentially, this is representing things pretty well. Uh, so yeah, this is it, basically, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, then please consider liking and subscribing. If you have any queries, then also post them down in the comments box below. And any obvious, any uh, future recommendations for tutorials that you might have, I would be very happy to receive your feedback. But anyway, have a great day, guys, and peace out.